We will be using Lagrangian mechanics to find the equation of motion for a rope of constant linear mass density falling off a table, as seen in the diagram on the right. I will be using the distance from the table to the lowest point on the rope as the generalized coordinate. The first thing that we need to do is find the equation for the kinetic energy. The equation for kinetic energy is K is equal to 1 half M, which is the mass of the whole rope, times Y dot squared. Y dot is the velocity, or uh, in this case, speed of the end of the rope. However, because everything is connected, the speed of every point is the same. Also needed to find the Lagrangian is the potential energy. In this case, there is only gravitational potential energy. So the reason why this will take a little bit more work for is because at every point on the rope, there's going to be a different gravitational potential energy. So we can use some calculus. So we can make a slice which is parallel to the table. This slice of infinitesimally small width will have a gravitational potential energy of du. We can then set the zero point for the gravitational potential energy to be the table. So all of our uh, potential energy is going to be negative in this case. The equation for gravitational potential energy is typically written as mgh. However, due to these circumstances, we will have to change it slightly. For one, we have to replace the m with dm because the mass of this slice has infinitesimally small mass. Everything else in the equation can be pretty much left the same. We multiply by little g, and then we multiply by y, which is the distance to whatever point we're referencing. We can then rewrite this because the differential is usually written at the end as uh, du is equal to negative gy dm. In the beginning, I said that the rope has a constant linear mass density denoted by lambda. This will be equal to dm divided by dy, and it is also equal to the total mass of the rope divided by the total length, L. This means we can make edits to our gravitational potential energy equation and change it to du is equal to negative g times y times lambda dy. We can then integrate both sides. We then get the following equation. Then we can use the reverse power rule and get that u is equal to negative one half g lambda y squared. We don't need to add any constants of integration because when using the Lagrangian, the only thing that matters is the change in potential energy. This equation can be made better because we know that lambda is equal to m over l. So we can substitute that into our equation and we get that u is equal to negative one half g times m over l times y squared. And I'm just going to clean that up a little bit so it looks nicer. U is equal to negative gmy squared all over 2L. We now have everything we need to make our Lagrangian. The Lagrangian is equal to the difference between the kinetic and potential energies. We have both of those, so we know it's equal to 1 half my dot squared plus mgy squared divided by 2l. Now we can start taking derivatives. The first thing that we have to do is find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y. There is no y in the first term, so that goes to 0. In the second term, we can just use the power rule, so 
it's going to be equal to 2 times mgy divided by 2l, and the 2s will obviously cancel. So we get that it is equal to mgy over l. The next thing that we have to do is find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y dot. There is no y dot in the second term, so we can just use the power rule in the first term, and we get that it is equal to my dot. Lastly, we just find the derivative with respect to time of that, and that is just going to be equal to my double dot. We can then equate the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y and the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y dot. And we get that my double dot is equal to mgy over l. The m's will then cancel out and we get that y double dot or the acceleration is equal to gy over l. Differential equations are typically written in decreasing order of degree derivative, so we can rewrite it like this. Fortunately, we can solve this differential equation. The first thing that we do is make an assumption, and that assumption is that y is equal to e to the a t. In a previous video, I used lambda, but we, we already used lambda in this video, so I'm going to use a instead. Now that we have a form for y, we know what y dot is. We could just take the derivative, and we get that y dot is equal to a e to the a t. And then we also know what y double dot is, and that's going to be equal to a squared times e to the a t. We can then plug in our assumed form of y and y double dot, into the differential equation, and we get that a squared e to the a t minus g over l times e to the a t is equal to zero. We then factor out an e to the a t, and we are left with a squared minus g over l. So fortunately, Exponentials cannot equal zero, so we know that a squared minus g over l has to equal zero. So a squared is going to be equal to g over l. We can then take the square root on both sides, and we get that a is equal to plus or minus the square root of g over l. Now that we have a, we have y, or the solution to the differential equation. For a linear homogeneous, DEs, we set it equal to the linear pair of both solutions. So because there are two solutions of y for the positive and the negative of a, we get that y is equal to e to the square root of g over l times t plus c2 times e to the power of negative square root of g over l times t. Let's make this problem a bit more interesting by adding some initial conditions. So we know that the rope has to be at least halfway off the table, otherwise it would not, would not slide off. So let's say that y of 0, which is the position of the bottom portion, is going to be equal to l over 2 plus 1. So this is going to be greater than half the length. We can then set the initial velocity of that point to be equal to zero. The reason we need two initial conditions is because there are two constants that we have to solve for, and also two initial conditions that can affect the motion of the rope. Using the first initial condition, we can substitute zero in for t, and that makes all the exponentials just go to one, so that all we're left with is c1 plus c2, and that is going to be equal to l over 2 plus 1. In order to use the other initial condition, we need to take the derivative, the time derivative specifically, of our solution. After doing that, we get this, which seems complicated, but because the initial condition is that y prime of 0 is equal to 0, 
the exponentials just go away, and we're left with the square root of g over l times c1 minus c2 is equal to 0. We can then just divide both sides by the square root of g over l, and that leaves us with c1 minus c2 is equal to 0. Remember the other equation was c1 plus c2 was equal to l over 2 plus 1. We can then just add those two equations up, and we get that 2c1 is equal to l over 2 plus 1. Dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we get that c1 is equal to l over 4 plus 1 half. We can then get a common denominator of 4, so c1 is equal to l over 4 plus 2 over 4, and that is equal to l plus 2 all over 4. If we look up back to the first equation, we can see that c1 is equal to c2. So now that we have c1, we also know that c2 is equal to l plus 2 all over 4. Now that we have our two constants, we can go back to our original equation of y of t, which is up there, and then plug in the constants. When we go back and plug in the constants, we get that y of t is equal to l plus 2 over 4 times e to the power of the square root of g over l times t plus l plus 2 over 4 times e to the power of negative square root of g over l times t. This is the final answer and it'll tell us exactly how far away the bottom of the rope is from the table at any point in time. Thank you for watching. Next video, we will be using Lagrangian mechanics to find the equation of motion for a spring pendulum. So it's where the string is replaced with a spring. That is all. Thank you. Bye.